So we've just arrived at the site of Tiryns. This is not far from Argos, just north, also near Mycenae. Now this is a Mycenaean site, apparently. Uh, it dates to around 1600 BC, its earliest megalithic phase, apparently. But it's got huge cyclopean walls here. Even Homer, when he was writing the Odyssey and the Iliad, described this site as being built by Cyclops because of the cyclopean mega-sized walls. It's also supposed to be where Hercules or Heracles was born and he performed his 12 labors from this particular site. But the hill it's on goes back to between seven and 9,000 years and it's almost continuous occupation according to some researchers, suggesting that indeed these walls, certainly the foundations of them, could be much older than previously realized. If this is the case, this could date all the polygonal and cyclopean walls to an earlier period than we're told because in Greece, they're thought to be Mycenaean. So we're talking 1600 BC at the earliest, but clearly they might be much, much more archaic, which is the case in Italy. And also the, uh, the polygonal pyramid near Argos as well, which could be at least 2700 BC. So let's take a look around the site. We're here with JJ, uh, Cameron and Leader, and we're gonna go and uh, see what we can see. So it is interesting that there is a connection with giants here, with the Cyclops, who were the offspring really of one branch of the Titans, and also uh, Heracles or Hercules, who was also supposed to be a giant. He was certainly renowned for his strength and ferocity, but you know, let's see what we can see here, see if we can see any evidence of earlier megalithic construction, because you can see over there, there's a huge doorway we're going to get up close to that in a moment and you just see these huge cyclopean walls and it's not really polygonal it's a little bit but this is reminds me of some of the sites in Italy that you know especially up north you get this kind of style so can we suggest this is indeed around the age of the Hellenicon Pyramid, 2700 BC, and therefore contemporary with the Pelasgians. So we're just gonna go and take a look. We're just walking across the rough terrain here. We've got to negotiate some large blocks. The reason being is that we just spotted an extremely large doorway, megalithic lintel. So this would have been one of the main doorways into the site here of uh, Tiryns. So this is like a sort of very interesting, you've got a huge lintel there, that's like sort of eight feet across, probably goes super deep. Then there you've got what appears to be another kind of entrance. So we're just walking along the edge of the western wall here at Tiryns. And yeah, pretty big blocks. They're not huge, but they're pretty big. I think they get bigger as we go round. So we'll find the ones that are more famous. But still, it's worth just getting close up here. They built the wall very high up and they kind of mixed it with bedrock. Not dissimilar to what we saw at the Hellenicon Pyramid and also we get this in Peru and Italy, obviously. So Cameron's just pointed out, you can see a sort of strip going down there and on the left where we've just been looking officially or supposed to be more modern whereas this is the earlier phase thought to be I guess Mycenaean which we're going to go and look at now just on this area here we just saw the line going down over there but on the right here as well we can see another line so it looks like this is some kind of partition so was this an entrance perhaps was it the edge of the original site not too sure. There is a small entrance over here. And we just have, you can see Cameron and JJ just heading towards it. JJ is already in. Let's have a little look. So whether this is an actual entrance or... What's in there? Interesting things. All things that are good. Have a look. Cameron has actually decided to crawl right in there. So... Do excuse me if you're going to get an image of his butt facing you. Well, you can't really see him, but you can see that goes quite deep. 
into actually all the way through so this could have been an original entrance here now it'd be very thin so it could have been like for water it could have been for some other purpose So we've just been pointed out these big old steps on the left with standard size steps on the right leading up into like the western entrance of the site. Let's take a quick walk up then we're going to come back down and go around the edge of the site. But you can see what we mean here. These are actually like sort of huge steps on the left and thinner smaller ones on the right. So let's just take a walk to the top, to the interior of the site, then we'll come back down. But over the other side, probably the eastern side is where we find the larger walls, the larger blocks. So this is the entrance way, not dissimilar to what we find at the Hittite or Hattian site in. And that is quite an interesting orientation, looking straight at the mountain top. Just now at the southern end of the site and you can see it continues all the way around. We've got this curved wall here. They think this is a later addition. And an entrance there, we're gonna go in in a moment to get into the, the main site, the proper area, the raised area. It's a classic kind of Mycenaean doorway, which we find even in Turkey at the, the Hattian or Hittite sites. We also find that in the Bronze Age sites in Sardinia, the Nuragic sites. So, you know, it seems to be this Mediterranean, megalithic, polygonal and cyclopean building culture, which, you know, according to Gary Biltcliffe and others, is the Pulaskians. So were these here as well. And it's known that this area here, indeed, was very close to the sea off the coast of Argos back in 2600 BC or thereabouts. The sea came in much, much closer to what it does currently which is a few miles away now so just outside the sort of southern and western entrance we're going to go up this is here now this is uh quite intriguing i'm sure it's got a, an official explanation but this is a massive block of stone which seems to be sort of slightly anomalous is it like a stone for working the crops working the wheat grains or is it something else? Is it some defensive thing? Very, 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 it's a huge great thing carved out of solid rock, whatever it is. So this is like the, the rear entrance to the site. And uh, again, it's got a combination of natural rocky outcrop with the cyclopean stonework i think these steps have probably been added for tourists but they're probably much wider larger originally let's take a look anyway i read today that at around 2600 bc or beyond it was very close right up to the site so it would have been a coastal megalithic fortress so it's at the top so, top part of the site on the western southern end see lots of rooms here it's been concreted as well there's a so-called spot here which officially is the bathroom it has a 20 ton slab and you can see that right here just to get scale that you can see Cameron standing behind it that is quite something Reminds me of Tiwanaku, and also you've got drill holes in it. So according to uh, our expert here, Cameron, <laughs> uh, these are 
ancient boreholes. So these do show signs of some kind of drilling technology. Exactly how they would have done it, we're not sure. We know they could probably because it's limestone. But then you have this kind of nice shaping around the stone here, this 20 ton stone. Apparently this was the washroom or the bathroom and the water would drain down at the back on the left there. Supposedly get changed here. This is intriguing. This is like strange. It's like an anomaly here really. Beautifully carved with a kind of edge around the stone. Suggesting that they could certainly work the stone. And this looks like a harder type of stone. It looks darker, it looks greyer. Some probably a higher quality type of limestone. So all along here we have bases of columns and this is the main courtyard basically and uh, lots lots of activity would have taken place here and of course we know in legend this was the where Heracles Heracles or Hercules lived where he performed his 12 uh, tasks which he had to perform and uh, and this is where he was based this is where he did it from just on the top here in the main sort of area this is the very ancient temple part of the site this is uh, supposedly a circular construction it goes back to very early bronze age or neolithic which i read was reading about earlier uh, you can't really see much of it now but there's a few stones and shapes left and it's some kind of shaped structure with a circular area so this is kind of intriguing so it proves that this was an important site before the Mycenaeans came in here and built upon it more cyclopean walls on the outside of the southern part of the site so we're going to go and look at some mega blocks the biggest ones on the site right now so we're just walking down the eastern part of the site now and we're going to the big old famous doorway where some of the largest stones are so uh, this is what i've been looking forward to seeing for quite some time and you can see the uprights here see how big these are very similar to the Hittite or Hattian sites that we find in Turkey. And you can see where there's a large hole has been carved out here where probably a wooden post would have gone through. And you can see all the pebbles and almost looks like a conglomerate type of stone, this one, unless it's been reconstructed. No, no, it's original, it's a conglomerate. It's it is original. Here. This is the big wall. So here we have the quite large stones. You can see these are like massive square chunks, beautifully put together. Not precise, not beautifully done, like uh, we find at some of the polygonal wall sites, but still pretty impressive. Nonetheless, it's on the interior of the site. And then we have another eastern entrance, or eastern viewpoint going here. It's like some kind of drill hole that goes but it's got a cornering going around. And I think this one is not the way it is. So right? look, yeah, it's kind of neatly done. It doesn't look like it's like natural. So there's some kind of technology that's curving that round to the other side. You can't see like too much there. It's hard to sort of make out, but there we have it. Look, you can see the thickness of the wall here. That is pretty major. So that in itself is interesting as so we get again this style all over Italy. And you get some interesting stones here uh, just jutting out here. And these are, you know, again cyclopean. They're not they're not huge, it's not they're not massive stones here so far. But these have got puffy kind of not really polygonal, more cyclopean quality to them. But very high walls. So this would have been the main entrance as the camera's just pointing out. But we're going to take a last little look around this side, which is the eastern and northern edge. So that one's like almost leaning forward here, this wall. And it makes you wonder, you know, is that going to collapse? There's like a little doorway there. There's even a hole in the top stone of the actual chunk. 
and this is some of the crumbling blocks that have fallen down. You can see the very rough hewn. So we're just leaving the site of Tyrians here near Argos. Again, this is officially Mycenaean era, 1600 BC onwards, but behind me you can see massive, you know, cyclopean blocks and i like the fact that there's still this reference up into homer's time when he was writing the iliad and the uh, odyssey talking about how the only explanation for these stones was that they were built by giants i.e the cy cyclops um so this tradition is really strong here especially when it comes to these sites of polygonal and cyclopean walls because um so were there really giants here in ancient greece was there an actual race of titans and we know that the titans goes back the whole tradition the legends go back before the time of the uh, olympian gods zeus and so on and we have Kronos, who was like the father of the titans who gave birth to zeus who eventually killed him and so forth and so the references and the strong traditions and legends and folklore and uh, the classical stories that stretch back into prehistory to the beginning of time really more research needs to be done but the fact we're finding dating here going back to such an early era seven to nine thousand years ago is remarkable in itself and is worthy of more investigation yeah.